Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Thursday, September 26th, 2024, and here are the readings for today. A reading from St. John's First Catholic Letter, chapter 4, verses 12 through 19. No man has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his own spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Lord has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we know and believe the love God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. In this is love perfected with us, that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment. And he who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 19, verses 25 through 28, and chapter 21, verses 24 and 25. Let us be attentive. At that time, standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. This is the disciple who is bearing witness to these things, and who has written these things, and we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things which Jesus did, were every one of them to be written, I suppose the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. Today in the Orthodox Church, we remember the falling asleep of the Apostle and Evangelist John, otherwise known as John the Theologian. In the Orthodox Church, there are three people who are given the designation of Theologian, Theologians are not scholars of great uh, theological intellectual pursuits in the Orthodox Church. Theologians are the ones that have actually had a direct contact with God in some manner. We have St. Gregory, whose poetry is so deep and so mysterious that it is quite clear that he had revelations from God. There's St. Simeon, the new theologian, who also had concrete visions of God. And then we have John the theologian, whose book of the apocalypse, or revelation as we call it, gives a lurid account of an experience that he has in the presence of God and of things that were to come. And so because of these visions, he is also seen as a great theologian in the church. He was one of the youngest disciples Every time you see him in an icon, unless it is dealing with him strictly in his later years, especially when he is with Christ or with the disciples, he is seen as a beardless man. In iconography, that means that this is a young person, because anyone who was older had a beard. There are very few old men in that time and in that place that did not have a beard. So he, along with a couple of others, are seen as beardless. In the icon of the Last Supper, you see him resting against the bosom of Christ, as is depicted in his Gospel. He is not just the writer of the Gospel of St. John, he is also the writer of three of the letters that are found in the New Testament, along with the Apocalypse of St. John. So all of those things together show the great scope of his help, the way that he helped the church to grow in its early days. The Gospel of St. John 
is also seen as one of the most theological of the Gospels. All the others tend to portray things in a linear and historical manner. In the Gospel of St. John, you immediately take on the mystical realization that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word, the Logos, understood as the second person of the Holy Trinity, and later in the Gospel, not too far in, it says that the Word took on flesh and became man. And from there we have such a great understanding of the nature of who Jesus Christ is, fully God and fully human. And the Gospel itself of St. John, especially the, the long excursus that goes on at the time of our Lord's praying in Gethsemane, it's some of the most theologically dense material that we find describing Christ and his relationship to God the Father. Another interesting thing about St. John, the apostle and the evangelist and theologian, is that he was not martyred. He was exiled to Patmos, and he lived out his days in that lonely exile, but he was not killed, murdered by the opponents of Christianity. In our church, St. Elias in Newcastle, if you look at our iconostasis, you will see so many people lined up in those great icons that we have on the iconostasis. And in that, there are only four of all of the collection that's there who died a more or less natural death, or at least wasn't executed or murdered. We have the Mother of God. We have St. Anthony the Great, the desert dweller. We have Elias himself, who was bodily taken up into the heavens, whether directly into heaven or just away from the context that he was in, we do not know. God knows. There is a reference that our Lord says that no one has ascended but the Son, but the one who has descended. So it's hard for us to know, based on scripture alone, whether Elias was taken into heaven or whether he was just sent into another land. Whatever the case is, he was never heard from again, but we would not say that he was martyred. So John stands as the fourth of all of those. He died at an old age, but of old age. And so we thank God for his witness, remembering also, by the way, that he was at the Feast of the Transfiguration. He was there, one of the witnesses of our Lord's transformation from human into the divinity of Christ insofar as they were able to withstand the dazzling brilliance that he had come from him. So anyway, we give thanks to God for St. John and his tireless dedication to us, his church. And we pray that through his intercessions, our Lord Jesus Christ will have mercy on us and save us. Amen.